This is part four of our book, Distributive Bargaining, the Vocabulary Section. So let's jump right into our vocab for this exciting section. We begin with the word bargaining. Bargaining. So of course this can take many forms, a noun, a verb, an adjective. Bargaining is between these two groups, this talking and working out of terms. It's also a negotiation, it's also haggling, a couple words we've seen before. Again, it takes two sides, at least two sides, that have something that they don't agree on, but some things they do agree on for them to go ahead and bargain. Now you can use this in your negotiation by just telling the other side. I would like to begin bargaining, or our bargaining has gone on too long, or when can we wrap up this bargaining? Now inside this chapter, there's a, some core ideas. We're getting a little bit deeper into the negotiation concepts now. And so there's some special words like this, the bargaining zone. So the bargaining zone is the space between the seller and the buyer's resistance points. So in this chapter, I don't want to go into detail of this now, but it just means there is a place, there's a price or a quality or a quantity or something, whatever they're bargaining about. I mean, they could be bargaining about anything, right? I mean, it could be anything. But there's one side and the other side, and one side wants something and the other side doesn't want that something. And this in between is where they can bargain. But beyond that, they're just going to say no and walk away, withdraw, give up, and don't bargain. So it's got to be something in between these extremes of both sides, and then they can bargain. And that's that zone, the bargaining zone, which is a really cool idea. You cannot bargain unless what you're talking about is inside the bargaining zone. Now you would not use this when you're speaking in a bargaining situation, in a negotiation, but you can use it in your planning because you're going to be trying to plan with your group about your bargaining zone, your side of the bargaining zone, and then you're going to be trying to guess what the other side's zone is, how far in that zone are they, and you want to push all the way to the edge to get the best deal you can, but you don't want to go outside because then you would be outside the bargaining zone. So you use this in your planning. Conflict. Now, of course, conflict is this idea that you're fighting or you're struggling against somebody or something, and there's always going to be conflict in your bargaining, in your negotiation, of course. That's kind of a basic idea. But you don't need to maximize it. You need to try to maximize your goal. So that may involve conflict. It may not involve conflict. But usually, I think, no, it's not that much conflict. It's much more about uh, offer, counter offer, and we don't want to get a little too excited or out of control about it. Deadlock. Deadlock means you're stuck. You cannot move in any direction. The negotiation specifically is deadlocked, meaning both sides are not going to change and they cannot agree. So a deadlock negotiation usually just has to come to an end. Now you, you can use this in your negotiation when you're talking to the other side by saying, I think we're in a deadlock. I think we're in, we are in a deadlock. This negotiation is deadlocked. You can use it this way. Or you could say, we want to avoid deadlock. Can you please just give in a little bit on price? So deadlock. It's, it's a perfectly fine word. Of course, it's negative, meaning you're not going to move forward. But it doesn't sound bad. It sounds very objective, a good word to use. Desired target. So of course, target being what you want to hit, where you want to get what you want to get and desired is the thing that you wish you could get the desire so your desired target is really key to your planning so you could ask the other side I mean you could always just say what's your desired target what's your desired target price of course they're not going to tell you the truth you can say also for yourself my desired target price is fifty dollars per unit uh, but of course that's not going to be true because I have my actual desired target price is secret, right? That's secret. So you can say this 
but you would not really say the truth unless you're being honest, in which case is a very special kind of negotiation. Discount. Now, discount means that you're lowering the price or you're lowering something to give more to, to the other side, usually price. So a discount price meaning lower. And usually we would talk about the list price and the discount price meaning we're giving something more uh, to lower the price or something in return. Distributive. Distributive, of course, is key to this chapter. Distributive meaning how do you divide up something? How do you divide up the pie? How do you divide it up? And in this case, distributive meaning if one side gets some more, the other side loses that more. So as one side wins something, the other side loses something. It's exactly equal, distributive. Now you do not use this in speaking, but we do use this in understanding the ideas or the theory of negotiation. And you can use this in your group when you're planning. Are you going to use distributive, a distributive approach? Final offer, you do use this when you're speaking and you say, this is my final offer. This is our final offer. After this, no more offers. And this is a way to try to conclude or wrap up the negotiation. It's also a way to give the other side pressure in saying, we need to hurry up because I'm not going to give you any more offers. It's my final offer. A related word to that is firm, meaning that I'm not going to change. This is it, no more changes. I'm firm. Now maybe you made no changes already, you just began at one price and you never change and you're firm. Well, okay, that's possible too. But firm is telling the other side that you're not going to change. So you use this when you're talking to the other side. I'm not changing. This is firm. This price is firm. Hostile. So hostile meaning not friendly or a little bit um, confrontational. So hostile is one way you can act in a negotiation. You can use this word in your negotiation and it's very effective when you accuse the other side of being hostile. So you can come out and say, you're being very hostile, meaning that they're too aggressive or they're too angry or they're giving you too much pressure. And when you say this to the other side, this will make them try to calm down and say, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. So this hostile, now you don't want to use it all the time. Uh, you don't want to just say, you're hostile because you won't give me anything, or you won't give me $10, but you, only, you gave me $9. That's hostile of you. It's a little bit extreme. The word is a little bit powerful, meaning they're really pushing against you. They're really being angry or, or mean about it, or not giving anything, or trying to take a lot. And you can accuse them of that. You just don't want to overuse it. Leftover. So leftover is a little bit like splitting things down the middle, right? Or, or splitting things up and you get half, I get half. Kind of like a compromise situation. But anyway, leftover is after you take out something, what's left? So the leftover is if, we make a, if we're negotiating and we're talking about a price or a shipping and we agree on something, but there's still a little bit left. We can talk, call that little bit left the leftover. So that leftover, we may, we may be able to have one side be responsible for or the other side, or we can come out and say we're going to split that leftover. Uh, well, the leftover, let's split it. We, we agree on everything, but we don't agree on this one thing. Let's split that in half. So that's possible. Maneuver. So maneuver is like your tactics. Do you do this way or do you do it this way? Do you go that way or do you go this way? Do you want to be more aggressive or do you want to be more passive? Do you want to say that your costs are high so you need the price to go up or do you want to say that uh, shipping is expensive so you need to have a higher price? What is this that you're going to move back and forth on? So that's called maneuvering, of course. So how do you change things? How do you change the way you do it? Now, in the negotiation, we can actually use the word maneuver when we're speaking, and you can ask the other side, can you please maneuver a little bit on this price? Or do you have room to maneuver on the price? Meaning, do you have any flexibility at all? Is there anything you can change to give me a, a benefit? 
pointless. Pointless is a great word to use when you're negotiating. And usually you give it to the other side, you tell the other side, this is pointless. And it's a way to pressure the other side to think that you're about to give up. And remember, both sides in the negotiation must be working together. If one side gets nothing, they're going to walk away. Or if they can't get anything they need, they're going to walk away. So both sides need to know that they're going to get something. And so when you say it's pointless, you're sending a signal to the other side that you're beginning to feel you're not getting anything. So you can say that. Or if you're arguing about a very small amount of money, and you can just come out and say, this is pointless, we're not making any progress, this is pointless. It's a very strong word, but it's not super negative, it's not super positive. It's negative, but it's not super negative, it doesn't feel bad. That's a really great word to use, but you don't want to use it all the time, just when you're kind of stuck. Okay, raise, of course, means to make higher, to increase. And here we will be talking about raising the price or raising the offer or raising something, changing something to be higher. And you use this when you're speaking. I need to raise my price or I need to raise the requirement. Resistance point is something we talk about in this chapter, which is a key idea. And that is that there's a price or a shipping time or a quality or something about the negotiation that you cannot give up. You must have that. That is the minimum. And that's called your resistance point. If the other side will not give you that, you, you'll walk away, you'll give up, you'll withdraw. Of course, your goal is to get more than that, but that's called your resistance point. So it's the point that you, if you go past that point, if it's below that point, you won't negotiate because it's not, not enough for you. Take a loss. So take a loss is a word, or a phrase, that you can often use when you're negotiating. And I think it's very common that you probably have used this before, you've seen this before, where you go to buy something and you talk to the a seller and the seller says, I'm losing money, I'm losing money. This price is so low, I'm actually losing money. And that's this idea of take a loss, that you're gonna give the deal, but you're going to lose money. So you use this when you're speaking to the other side, you say, I cannot take a loss on this product. Or you can say, well, okay, I'll give you the price you want, but it's going to make me take a loss. I'm going to have to take a loss. And that's exactly um, the way you would say it. Now, is it true? No, probably not true. I mean, why would you sell if you're going to take a loss? That doesn't even make sense, right? I guess you could if you're sacrificing for the relationship, but you get the idea. Usually not. Target point. Now, target point is kind of related to this resistance point. Resistance point being beyond that, the, the deal is off, you're not going to do it. The target point is what you would like to get. So this is your kind of goal that is the best situation, the best outcome possible. And again, I just want to emphasize that is your secret information. Never let that information out. You don't want the other side to know your target and your resistance because you want to get this and you cannot go below that. You don't want to tell them that because you want to get the best you can. Ultimatum, ultimatum is an offer that is something else or in place of um, what you really want. So it's like the final, the final, um, how to say this? <laughs> A little bit hard to say, right? It's the, it's the final offer whether you want it or not. This is the ultimatum. So I can tell, let's say that we're having a negotiation and you want $10 and I want $9. And we've been discussing this for a long time now. And finally, I say, my ultimatum is 970. That's it. My ult ultimate ultimatum. That means I, that's it. I can't go past that. That's all there is. That's the last chance. That's the last chance. And if you don't take it, then probably I, I'm threatening to withdraw or give up on this negotiation. It's not what you want. You see, if, the ultim if I give you an offer and it's an ultimatum and you, and you like it, it would not be called an ultimatum. An ultimatum means it's not what you wanted, but it's what I say you have to take, otherwise it's off. It's kind of like the last, the last demand or the last offer. So it's kind of a threat. 
Now you cannot use this all the time, obviously. You cannot say everything is an ultimatum. Um, you must take this price, that's my ultimatum. Or you must take this quantity, and you must take this uh, product a lot size, and you must take this shipping speed. That's my ultimatum. That's all my ultimatum. You cannot do that. It can only be like one time you use this. Otherwise, the other side thinks you're a little bit crazy. So ultimatum means that if you don't, if we don't agree now, that's it. You are going to withdraw. So if you give someone an ultimatum and you don't withdraw, that's a little bit weird. They're not going to believe you in the future. Uncooperative. Uncooperative meaning does not cooperate well, right? does not want to work together, does not want to cooperate. So you can use this in your negotiation. How can you use this? You can tell the other side. You are being uncooperative. You are being uncooperative. You can come out and say that. Or what about saying something a little bit better like, are you being uncooperative? You kind of ask a question. Are you being uncooperative? Because they're not giving in, so you kind of, you kind of give them a little bit of pressure to answer that question. Or you can say about yourself, I'm not being uncooperative, I'm trying to help. I'm trying to find a solution that's best for all of us. I'm not being uncooperative. You are being uncooperative. So it's a great word you can use in your negotiation. It really works well. Unyielding. Unyielding means not giving up, not giving in, not sacrificing or giving something. So unyielding you can use in your negotiation. When you're talking to the other side, you could say, you are being unyielding, or why are you so unyielding? Or the other way, I'm not unyielding. I've already given you $5 more. I'm not unyielding, right? So it's kind of like uncooperative in a way. We cannot make this offer again is a great phrase, and we often hear this phrase in a negotiation. We cannot make this offer again. It's kind of like, this is my final offer. Now, it, this is my final offer means after this offer, uh, I'm not going to make any more. Or this is my ultimatum. Ultimatum meaning take this or leave it because I'm, that's it. But we cannot make this offer again is much weaker. It's much more friendlier. And it's used so often, so many people hear it all of the time, that you can use this often in your negotiation. We cannot make this offer again. Or you, I'm giving you something so special, we cannot make this offer again, but I'll make it this one time. It's a way for me to give in and give you something, but not promise to give you the same thing in the future. It's also a way for me to make it sound like it's hard for me to give this to you, even though it's not that hard. Remember the negotiation is about keeping your secrets. You don't want to tell people if you're if you really don't want to give them that price, you don't want to tell them that. Honestly, you've got to keep your secret information secret. And this is one way to send that signal. Wrap up a deal. Wrap up. So here we're going to wrap up a deal meaning that the deal is done and you can say this in your negotiation. If you can just give me 50 cents more, we can wrap up this deal we can wrap up this deal. If we can agree on the shipping terms, we can wrap up this deal. I want to wrap up this deal now. And then you can give them that. So wrap up a deal is that it's going to be finished and it's very positive, not negative. Of course, if it's negative, it would not be wrapped up. It would be undone. It would be not complete or it would just be over and that's not finished. So finished means there was a positive outcome. Now you may lose more than what you wanted. You may not meet your goal, but still is wrapped up. Okay, that's it for part number four. Thank you very much.